Do do. Where am I? Yeah, but you're your one now. One of the few half-hour-long specials of Ed, Ed, and Eddie, titled "The Eds Are Coming," Jimmy has a nightmare where aliens attack the cult. Of the Eds Are Coming. Jimmy has a nightmare where aliens attack the cul-de-sac. Takes a whole area away. One might assume that the nightmare is very comedic, with the stereotypical little green men. With the stereotypical little green men aliens invading with ray guns. Instead, however, a massive buzzsaw slamming Seems down like out of nowhere. A hellish Are purple you, vortex right? rips open the sky. Purple vortex rips open little green men aliens invading with so ray guns. Yeah, Instead, however, we are treated with a massive oh buzzsaw slamming down out of nowhere. A hellish purple vortex rips open the sky with the menacing spiked mechanical tentacles swooping down. He attempts to reset Jimmy's grip weakens and he falls to his death. Nice work, guys. Which one of you did the drawing over there? Not me. It looks like a volcano. I wonder if it means anything. Oh, it is another case of, oh, it's just a dream. This nightmare actually traumatizes Jimmy into having PTSD flashbacks to it throughout the episode. What happened, you guys? And where's the firewood? Like, if we don't get out of here soon, we're all going to be firewood. What are you talking about, Shaggy? Volcano. Volcano? Oh, great. This amplified with Johnny's claims that there are actually aliens at the cul-de-sac. And that they are Wolf's house. Things get even freakier when they find a glowing green meteorite at the playground. We've got company! <laughs> Start climbing! The episode Teeth for Two from Cat Dog, we get treated to a quick and nasty scene featuring everyone's favorite gross sound gag in animation. Teeth for Two from Cat Dog, we get treated to a quick and nasty scene featuring everyone's favorite gross sound gag in animation. Skinned, bloody, skinned, bloody cats. We go to the dentist and discover that if one doesn't take care of their teeth, it's the others that is affected. Dog eats disgusting amounts of junk food and never brushes, yet it's cat who gets all the cavities. Yet it's cat who gets all the cavities. He tries to get dog to take care of his teeth so he won't suffer anymore, but it's no use. Dog won't like aluminum foil to hurt each other's teeth. Uh, that hurts just thinking about it. Instead of simply moving over to Dog and opening his mouth, Cat decides to pull himself through his skin and out of Dog's mouth. Works for me! Oh my gosh, you guys have to see this! Upon waking up, Dog shares the same reaction all of us would have, and is terrified. Fear turns to anger, and he swallows Cat back into his own skin. And the cat dog is a strange concept for a show that just barely scratches the surface of all the weird and disturbing shit the two of them are capable This is one of those things that we wish stayed under the surface. Stayed under the surface. One time Nickelodeon made a show comprised entirely of ugly puppets selling meat to equally ugly puppets. It was titled Mr. Meaty and featured two teenagers, Josh and Parker, who well, especially by vegetarians and parents who did not appreciate the abundance of meat and gross network received many petitions to end the show, with infamous being the tapeworm in the episode Mooch Master P. The most infamous being the tapeworm in the episode Mr. P. The episode starts with Park starts with Parker mooching off of Josh's lunch, much to his annoyance. He 
continues to mooch off of everyone in the food court until he has earned the title, The Mall Moocher. He eventually stoops to the low level of eating the raw burgers they plan on serving to customers. However, strange things begin occurring after eating. Parker finds that food is disappearing right before, it, before he can even eat it. He's unable to deliver food orders either, and has disappeared in thin air. Josh records Parker trying to eat, and then revealing that an enormous tapeworm is now living inside of his stomach. Thanks to the wrong burger he ate. The two get the tapeworm out, yank- The two get the tapeworm out, yanking it from Parker's stomach and into his arm, where it writhes around chaotically. I've got the backup ready. Push off, now! Afterwards, an Australian man comes up and asks to buy it for a zoo. The boys agree, they hand it over to him, and then the man swallows it whole. Morning and a reminder for any surviving Jedi. Trust in the Force. Do not return to the temple. That time has passed. And our future is uncertain. We will each be challenged. Our trust, our faith, our friendships. But we must persevere. And in time, a new hope will emerge. May the Force be with you. Always. I killed your children like I'm gonna cook us some mystery, don't I? Despite being named Wrath of the Krampus, this is not a Christmas episode of Scooby Doo Mystery Incorporated. Talk about a missed opportunity. What it is, however, is a disturbing romp through an abandoned doll factory required to be unnecessarily terrifying. Shaggy calls it uber creepy, which is an understatement given that the factory is full of ultra realistic dolls clashing with the show's simple and cartoony art style. With their action. Until their heads start turning and they begin talking, because then they leave a terrifying and lasting impression. It's unclear why or how these dolls spoke, but given the existence of the supernatural in this series as opposed to the original, the dolls could actually be possessed. Stand your ground, you devil and cowards! Nebulon, this battle is lost. Poor Puff Girls. Sugar, spice, and everything nice. But Professor Utonium accidentally added an extra ingredient to the concoction, chemical X. With is not a good feeling at all. Such is the case in the episode Speed Demon of the Powerpuff Girls. The episode begins innocently enough, enough, with Buttercup waiting for the school day to be over, so she can finally go on vacation with the other girls and the professor to the Bahamas. The school day ends with the three girls racing out as fast as they can. Buttercup challenges the which becomes incredibly intense. Any clues, curator? Well, I didn't want these brutish police trouncing around my beautiful museum. That's silly. Okay, girls, spread and search. No, no, no clue. Oh! Without success. Upon seeing him, he chases them away, calling them nothing but hallucinations. After running from the lab, the girls find that all of Townsville has become a desolate wasteland. Megoshi yells at them to get out, stating that the mayor is hers. Next on their stop is the kindergarten where they find an old and senile Miss Keen, who waves endlessly, repeating the same sentence over and over. The girls find out that they have been transported 50 years into the future, and the whole world went to heck. The girls take out their anger by beating the ever-loving shit out of him, but it doesn't even faze him. 
he just gets back up like nothing happened. He then grows to a monstrous size, chanting, You did this, surrounding the girls. Him states that he simply took over, but it was the girls who abandoned them. The chanting and music get louder and louder until the girls cannot simply take it anymore and run away as fast as they can. Think with everyone back to normal. The girls rush to tell the professor everything that happened. He then comes to the realization that Townsville cannot survive without the girls. Not the day is saved and the vacation is cancelled. This episode is just very upsetting, given its mood whiplash from the rest of the series. And seeing all these characters that we know and love becoming old shadows of their former selves. Fifteenth episode of Batman Beyond. We are introduced to an original villain named Earth Mover, apparently out of dirt. Throughout the episode, Terry's friend Jackie Wallace feels as if she's being constantly watched. Long may your lums reek you can, all that stuff. Kiss and make friends. Yeah. Well, I'm all for peaceful relations. Cool. 